Now, from Wish TV, your local news source, this is All Indiana Politics. Good morning to you. I'm Alexis Rogers. Phil Sanchez has the weekend off. Okay, so let's start today with the dramatic series of events in Washington. Indiana Republican Jim Banks booted from the House Committee investigating the Capitol insurrection even before the committee began its work. It happened Wednesday right around noon. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced what she called an unprecedented decision. She would not seat Banks or Ohio Republican Jim Jordan on the committee less than 48 hours after Republican leaders nominated them. Just one People want to know the truth, and in light of statements and actions taken by them, um, I could not appoint them. I said that while this may be unprecedented, so was an attack on the Capitol. This is the people's house, not Pelosi's house. Just one hour before the speaker announced her decision, News 8's Scott Sander was talking to Congressman Banks about what he planned to do on the committee. It won't surprise you at all that Indiana Democrats are not pleased with your appointment in particular to this. They're quoted in a statement saying it's a partisan stunt, not one aimed to solve the domestic terrorist attack on the United States. Your answer to that? Uh, they're exactly right. This is a partisan stunt, but it's, by, uh, it's a partisan stunt by the Democrats. And uh, that's painfully obvious, I believe, to most of the American people. Democrats want to talk about January 6th. They want to beat up on Donald Trump. The chairman of this committee said yesterday that nothing is off limits. And Donald, we're going to dig into Donald Trump's responsibility for January 6th, is what he said. And then, and then almost just a couple of minutes later, he told a reporter that nothing's off limits except for Nancy Pelosi. He said Speaker Pelosi is off limits. And the, what you have to keep in mind here is that Speaker Pelosi is ultimately the, the most powerful person in the Capitol that the Capitol Police report to. And we have, we have very tough questions for Speaker Pelosi, the head of the Capitol Police, the Sergeant at Arms. Uh, why was the Capitol left vulnerable to attack on a January 6th and why weren't we prepared for it when we had intelligence that told us yeah. that something might happen? And that's why, that's why Nancy Pelosi needs to answer questions that so far nobody has demanded answers from her about her lack of leadership and the, and the leadership underneath her that she appointed to these important positions. We're gonna demand answers to that question. I wanna make clear that people understand and you have the opportunity to explain exactly where you're coming from in terms of what you will listen to, what you don't want to hear, uh, and what you consider this to all be about. As you know, uh, Minority Leader McCarthy said in the immediate aftermath of this, the president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by, in his words, mob rioters. Senate Majority Leader Mc uh, McConnell, uh, Minority Leader now, called it an insurrection, immediately no questions. There seems to be a new um, thought that this was not even an insurrection or not something worth looking to at all. That's not where you're coming from, correct? Well, like I said, I mean, we, we are going to demand answers to questions that have been asked. And, and we're going to follow the facts. There are a lot of questions about what happened that day that haven't been answered. There's a lot of, there are several hours of footage that haven't been seen or, re, or released uh, at the Capitol on January 6th. There are intelligence reports that were released prior to January 6th, three weeks before January 6th, that suggested that something might happen at the Capitol that day. So uh, we're going to follow the facts. We're going to demand answers to tough questions. I'm, as the Republican lead on this committee, I'm going to be asking the tough questions of the witnesses that are called. But at the end of the day, never forget, this is a truly partisan stunt by the Democrats because they want to talk about January 6th. They want to beat up on Donald Trump. They don't want to talk about crime waves in cities that are a result of their defunding the police efforts. They don't want to talk about rising inflation. That's the result of them spending more money than any government has spent in the history of the world. And they don't want to talk about the crisis at the border. And on top of that, the anti-American sentiment that they're selling to the American people that the American people are rejecting. Uh, your initial statement, our conversation here today indicates you're very focused on, on the security around the Capitol, both leading up to that day and what happened that day as well. I'm not hearing much of an interest in what motivated or drove the people to do what they did. Are you interested in hearing that? If the Democrats are open to what you want to discuss, are you open to understanding more about what motivated the attack? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sure that would be a major part of uh, many, many of the hearings that would be called along the way. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be in my seat as the ranking member listening to those who come to testify. But there are a lot of questions that have not been answered to this point that Democrats don't want to answer about why there was a total breakdown in the security at the Capitol, why the National Guard 
uh, was uh, was called off because of, of Democrats thinking that it was bad optics to have the National Guard at the United States Capitol to protect uh, to protect the Capitol and protect members of Congress and our staff on January 6. We have we have questions about that as well. So if we want to make sure that something like this never happens again, we have to take a take a deep look at the, the failure of security on that day. And let me tell you, there are the brave men and women who make up the Capitol Police Department who protect me every day. They protect my family. They protect my staff on Capitol Hill. They're, they're heroes. But at the highest levels of the Capitol Police, there is a breakdown in leadership. And that's where, that's where we want to focus in the days to come to make sure that something like this never happens again. I want to echo that question again because I want to give you the opportunity to be absolutely clear. I did not hear you say you're interested in what drove the insurrectionists to do what they did. Is that cr true? Well, I, I'm, I'm interested in all of it. I'm interested in, in uh, why the Capitol was breached, who breached it. There have been 500 arrests of people who, have, who illegally broke into the Capitol. Anyone who, who uh, injured uh, or was violent toward a police officer and anyone who uh, destroyed public property or broke into the Capitol that day should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And I, and I have no doubt that'll be a part of, of many of the hearings uh, that we have that, that we, where, we, where we discuss uh, those, those topics. But what I'm telling you what I'm interested in is why the Capitol was vulnerable that day. If we're gonna make sure that never happens again, we need to have more of a focus on that. And Democrats don't wanna talk about that because at the end of the day, Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House is at the top of the food chain. The Capitol Police report to her. Why was the National Guard called off that day? Why was the Capitol vulnerable to an attack when we had intelligence that said that something dangerous would happen at the Capitol? Those are questions that Democrats don't want to answer. That we're going to force them uh, to answer those questions along the way. The ranking member of the uh, Select Committee, Jim Banks, representative from Indiana, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, jobs, unemployment, and infrastructure. The head of Indiana Democrats joining us to talk those and his response to Jim Banks next on All Indiana Politics. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics as we turn to another debate in Washington, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The Senate may take a new vote on advancing that plan this week after Republicans stopped debate from beginning on Wednesday. Senators working on details of the plan, including Indiana Republican Todd Young, say they have hope that the full bill will be written and ready for debate this coming week. It also comes as Democrats in Indiana are trying to drum up grassroots pressure for it and the president's American Jobs Plan. Let's welcome in Mike Schmuel, who is the chairman of the Indiana Democratic Party. Thanks for joining us, Mike, today. Uh, lots of heavy topics to talk about, but the first one is pretty much the biggest one that we've been on all week. We've spent the last couple of weeks talking about this crisis in Indiana for the unemployment system. So my question to you is, do you believe there is a crisis and what is going on with the system? You know, I think there's a few things to unpack there. I think, first of all, uh, COVID-19 um, has shown that there's just such a gulf in our economy between people who have uh, quite a bit of money and people who are really struggling. Um, I think it's welcome news that the unemployment rate uh, is lower uh, in Indiana and across the country, um, but still we're not paying people enough um, to make a livable wage in Indiana. And I think that needs to change. Um, you know, Democrats, we talk a lot about increasing uh, the minimum wage in our state and across the country so people can live uh, fuller, better lives. Uh, and I think that that needs to happen. And so uh, unemployment insurance has shown that people need extra money to get by. Um, people can find a good paying job, um, but if they can't, um, they need to have that supplemental insurance to get by and fully get out of this pandemic. I think that's number one. I think number two, is there have been administrative issues in terms of people um, getting payments, getting them on time and getting in the system. Uh, we need to iron that out so everybody can get back to work uh, and, and participate in the Hoosier economy. Yeah, and, and you guys have been traveling around to build support for President um, Joe Biden's plan, but is there something that you guys have in mind that's going to bring immediate relief to Hoosiers who are in need of work right now? Yeah, there's been a few things. Um, Last month, we had um, the, uh, the payments that went out. 91% um, of Hoosiers um, received $1,400 uh, stimulus checks um, from the federal government. So that was a really big boost um, in terms of putting money um, in people's pocketbooks and purses. Uh, the other thing that just happened uh, this past week and also this week is a child tax credit. So if you, um, you know, have a child and you are, are struggling to get through COVID, I mean, childcare costs, 
education, um, you know, being schooled from home, all of those issues uh, are really a burden on, on Hoosier families, moms and dads. And so um, those benefit checks uh, are going out right now as well. So those are actually direct payments um, that again are hugely popular um, that the federal government, uh, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris are pushing out uh, to get into Hoosier pocketbooks. Now, uh, the Senate appears to be pretty close to holding a vote on bipartisan infrastructure bill. Uh, Senator Todd Young has endorsed this proposal. So my question for you is, what does this plan mean for Indiana? And what's the message that you have for Senator Braun? Yeah, it would be a, a huge investment, um, more than a generational investment. Um, the last time we really had a huge infrastructure package um, that went through uh, in Washington, D.C., I think Dwight Eisenhower was president after World War II. Um, you know, this was to, to help with our federal highway systems. Um, but you think about the age of a lot of our infrastructure, roads, bridges, broadband internet, um, all of those things. Uh, and we're the crossroads of America. Uh, we should have the best roads, the best bridges, uh, and really, really reinvest in a lot of this infrastructure that has seen its life kind of play out over the last 75 years. Um, so I'm hopeful that they're gonna, they're gonna come together. Um, and it is good to see out of Washington, a bipartisan plan uh, come together. You know, I would urge uh, Senator Braun to support this plan. It is good for Indiana. It is good for our communities. Uh, and I'll also add a guy that I, I know and I, I've worked with over the years is Secretary uh, Buttigieg. And he is gonna have a critical role as uh, Secretary of Transportation, um, you know, in kind of working through this package and going around the country um, to improve our, our overall economy and our infrastructure. Okay, you know, I, I can't let you leave without asking about the developments this week on Republican Congressman Jim Banks. Uh, so Speaker Nancy Pelosi, she rejected him for the January 6th House Committee. Do you think she made the right decision on that? You know, I think having Jim Banks on that committee is kind of like having Peyton Manning play for the New England Patriots. It just doesn't make sense. Um, you know, and I look back to uh, January 5th, the day before uh, the insurrection, and Jim Banks was really encouraging and prodding along uh, folks to come to DC, saying we can't go back to normal. Um, so really inciting some of the stuff that uh, former President Trump uh, was also doing. Um, and so I think that you know even before getting on that commission, we kind of know where he stands, and he wasn't going to be um, just a, a nonpartisan judge or a person who was going to accept all the material that was was coming before him. So um, you know I do uh, I do think that it was the right call. Uh, and I think that we really do need uh, an independent, bipartisan, open investigation into what happened on January 6th. It's just unacceptable what happened and we can't go back there again. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate your time. I thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, take care. Thank you both. And you know, you just heard them talk about this just a few moments ago, mentioning Indiana Senator Mike Braun. He told us this week he does not share President Biden's optimism that the bill will pass the vote on Monday. I think that until every one of us uh, on our side of the aisle scrutinizes it closely about how hard the pay fors are and then how you get around the fact that we're going to have $3.5 trillion spent on soft infrastructure, which they've already said they're going to do, I, I'm really, uh, it's going to be too close to call. Take all Indiana politics on the go with you. Download our podcast now. Part of the All Indiana Podcast Network and allindianapodcastnetwork.com. Welcome back to All Indiana Politics as we welcome back former Indiana Democratic Party Chair Kip Tu and Robert Vane, Republican Communications Specialist and host of the Leaders and Legends podcast on the All Indiana Podcast Network. Thank you both for being here with us today. Okay, so let's start by talking about the decision on Jim Banks. Everybody's talking about it. Robert, is this committee a partisan stud by Democrats? Didn't Republicans pick Jim Banks because of his fierce support of Donald Trump? Well, if it wasn't a partisan stunt before, it certainly is now. There was no reason to remove Representative Banks. He made it clear in his interview that everybody needs to answer questions. Everyone who is responsible at both the grassroots and the top levels, they need to appear before the committee and face the music on this. Anyone who defends what happens at that, on that Capitol on that day, quite frankly, is, uh, should be ashamed of themselves. But the responsibility for what happened that day doesn't just rest with the folks who are mad. 
It rests with the people who were supposed to protect the Capitol. Banks deserves to be on that committee. He's earned that spot. And Pelosi has once again proven herself to be the most partisan speaker since our founding. Kip, I'll go over to you. Did the speaker just hand Republicans a win, putting a cloud over the committee before it even held its first meeting or hearing? Well, we have to remember a couple of things. First thing we have to remember is that uh, there was an attempt to have a bipartisan commission that Jim Banks and Jim Jordan and a whole bunch of other people voted against so we couldn't have the uh, bipartisan commission. So this is a select commission. And uh, because the Republicans refuse to participate. They've been playing, uh, you know, performance politics on this uh, very serious issue now since it happened because their ringleader uh, of the circus, Donald Trump, wants it to be that way. The second point I would make is you don't have to take my word for it. You don't have to take Speaker Pelosi's word for it. Take Liz Cheney's word for it, someone for whom uh, conservative uh, had some meaning before Donald Trump showed up on the scene. Liz Cheney says, and I quote, that Jim Banks was not taking it seriously, not dealing with the facts of the investigation, but rather using it as a political platform. And Nancy Pelosi was correct to take him off the committee. So that's a Republican in the Republican caucus in Congress, as conservative as they come. Her father was the vice president under George W. Bush, and she's saying Jim Banks shouldn't have been on that committee. And I think that uh, that bears some weight. Americans are very concerned about this truly being a bipartisan committee. Uh, Robert, did you have any follow-up to Kip? Well, it's nice to know that Kip has gotten on the Cheney political train uh, <laughs> after all these years. I'm sure uh, Liz will put no, you on I the phone right now, Mr. <laughs> Kipper V. Uh, you, you cannot unilaterally decide that folks should or shouldn't be on. You cannot prejudge what's going to happen. And that's exactly what Speaker Pelosi did. Let's get everybody at every level to answer every question about the egregious events of January 6th, and then let's move on. That's what they did during Watergate, and that's what they should do here. Let's switch gears a little bit to the Democrats push for the president's job plan. Kip, is there room for getting support in Indiana, or does this really just start a, a building a grassroots campaign in the state? Well, are you talking about the infrastructure plan that uh, the bipartisan senators are working on in, in D.C.? I think I heard good words out of Senator Young uh, that he's uh, hopeful that uh, we might get something done next week. If if that's the case, you know, I do think we'll be able to build support. Look, infrastructure in the state of Indiana um, is in bad shape and we ought to have a bipartisan um, agreement on how to how to fix that. If you travel the roads and the bridges in Indiana, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We're way behind in, in broadband um, uh, infrastructure as well, and we need to do something about that. We've got water problems. We've got so many infrastructure problems across the country. This is the one thing that I think both parties should be able to agree on. What's happening, of course, is that uh, Republicans are putting up roadblocks because they don't want uh, they don't want the president to have a success rather than worrying about trying to solve problems for citizens. Robert, Republicans continue to call this Biden plan a bad move for a recovering economy. Your thoughts? Well, when I drive across Indiana roads, all I see are a bunch of orange cones. Thanks to <laughs> Eric Holcomb. Next level transportation plan, Republican spending on infrastructure within the state by Hoosiers, for Hoosiers, on Hoosiers is unprecedented. So that's A. B, if you're talking about the infrastructure, the first part of it that's actually going to go to roads, I agree with Kip completely. I think we will get there. The second part that's the sort of wish list from the conservative, from the not so conservative, I would say, Democratic Party and its elements, that one I don't think is going to pass. Kip, what do you think? I don't think it'll be bipartisan, <laughs> um, but I think a lot of a lot of what's in there is uh, vitally necessary for for our country, and um, I'm perfectly comfortable if it's done during rec reconciliation because we can take it to the voters next time. Will the voters support that stuff. Um, you know, we have a majority, but we have power. We ought to be able to get done what we want to get done in those in those regards. And you guys can argue against it in the next election. Robert Vane, Kip, too. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us for All Indiana Politics. We'll be back here next Sunday morning at 930. You can also find our All Indiana podcast. It's part of the All Indiana Podcast Network at wishtv.com. We hope that you have a great rest of your weekend. And remember, we've got you covered. <laughs>